to watch me kind of get ready for three shows today right here on narc abuse tv network another day right here where we get to talk about a number of things that can be positive, informative, and encouraging. I see you, Anne. Thank you so much for being a regular part of encouraging others here on Narc Abuse TV Network. We have a treat for you today. Again, three shows, Natasha, Sabine, and Leon. We're going to cover relationships, recovery, and narcissism. But right now, we're going to talk about leadership and relationships and a whole lot more. So let's get Natasha in right about now. Hello. We, we did it. Yes. It's an often it's an often common express. Uh, ex, look at me. Look at me. Look at we just talked. It's it's not as if I've never <laughs> talked to you before. Hold on a second. Gentle slap across my face to make my tongue work. What has just happened here? I see your family and friends rolling in, uh, and uh, I've got to give a shout out to the book goddess. I was attempting to say it's a regular occurrence for me to tell people we did it. Mm. Hopefully you can uh, still hear me there. I can hear you. You can still hear me? We were buffering a little bit there, probably on my end. Uh, anyhow, what I wanted to say to you was um, I normally tell people, hey, we did it because that means there was something we were doing before we actually came on mm -hmm. when we said we were going to come on. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter with you because you're unique in the sense on this channel because you're one of the few people, I think there's only been two, that actually did a public service announcement on this channel. Yes. Do you remember that? I remember, you remember that. You remember that? So, <laughs> uh, that actually was huge. I just want you to know that a lot of people, even though, you know, you're too big for us now and you, you know, you, you have an empire, you and your family over there and don't have time for to come on the show anymore. Uh, that was huge. The public service. I think we did it during mental health month or something yeah. like that. I, I can't, mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. So uh, thank you so much for being on the show numerous times. And now you're back again, uh, kindly, uh, to share with us some information that uh, you and your family are a part of uh, mm -hmm. that also has a ripple effect uh, across other aspects of life, and that's leadership. Mm -hmm. So a number of people that are here this morning, um, I guess I should give a, a shout out to those who regularly support you. Um, if I if I say Ren Reynolds, yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> I, I, well, that was kind of a slow delay on giving a shout out to your mom. Yep, that's my mom. Let me fix that for you. Uh, uh Ren Reynolds, 
Yeah. I'll say it that way. Yeah, there you go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, that was kind of hard to get a little shout out for your mama. Okay, so <laughs> Fiona is here. Of course, I mentioned Anne and others that are here. The book goddess. Thank you uh, uh, Hello. Uh, for being here as well. Others are, are coming in as I goof off enough just to give them a chance to, to come in so they can hear part of what you're doing. Sabine is here. We will have Sabine a little bit later in the day, and then we will end the day with Leon Walker uh, talking about narcissism and how to leave the narc and uh, so forth. Uh, right now, though, because this channel is more than just about narcissism, mm -hmm. uh, even though it is Narc Abuse TV, it really is about being a leader. Oh, look at that. See, you, you can, you, son, she'll son still talk to you. Your mom will still talk to you. She gave you some hearts. <laughs> You've been forgiven. Uh, Trace Face and others are passed through are still here. Uh, she will be on the show soon. Um, we have a number of people that will be on the show, and I thank everyone. Uh, I want to thank all of you uh, for making it a beautiful ride uh, doing this show. Uh, the only Narc Abuse TV network, uh, especially coming from Southern California, really appreciate it. But when it comes to people taking on the responsibility to be exemplary to others. It's not easy. Hello, Trace. I thank you for the shout out. I see the hello. Uh, oh, let's do a wave to everybody. Let's just do that. Let's do that. We love you guys. Thank you guys. We really want to talk about leadership right now. And you have a program that's dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about it. And then we're going to really take a deep dive into it as much as we can for uh, the next few minutes or so. Go ahead, please. Absolutely. Did we get you back there? Let's see if we have a little signal issue or not. Okay, so at this moment, we're going to bring her back in. Uh, I love that. I love that. We're frozen in time, as it were. Let's bring her back in, and let's see what we get here. We're back. Hey, nothing stops us, man. Dude, we don't. Sorry about hey, that. You know, when, when, when big corporations are calling you and you're doing my little hole-in-the-wall <laughs> show, I understand. You know, we're just a, a little bitty place in the universe. Very small. Very small. And this is you and your empire. Uh, your empire taking over the planet. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. May the, okay, may the harsh, may the harsh be with now. you. Hey, it's Friday, man. I mean, how, how many times have I told people Friday? Forget me being serious. That's just not going to happen. <laughs> All right, so you're starting off this uh, three-tier uh, attack uh, from Narc Abuse TV with three different people, and uh, no glitch can stop us. Matter of fact, uh, uh, Sherry from the Book Goddess told us that we were frozen. So <laughs> we were. Thank you for informing us. Like a Sears catalog. All right, yeah, you know, so... <laughs> All right. All right. Leadership. So, Let's show some good leadership. leadership here and talk about some positive qualities that men and women can look for in others when it comes to leadership, especially in uh, relationships as well. Go ahead, please. Absolutely. So <laughs> self-leadership is uh, a program that uh, All Strives, which is a, a company between myself and the co-founder, who's also my dad actually and it is called self leadership academy is a new course that we're we're launching in 2022 and it's really about being able to understand how to lead yourself in order to have leadership abilities to lead others and especially now that we are in a virtual world there's not as much accountability in terms of that partnership that can be ha taking place as mentorship would have been years ago being in the office. So self-leadership is something that's crucial to ensure that you have in order to make sure that you're connecting with your team, make sure that you're accountable for yourself. Um, so self-leadership essentially is knowing how to lead yourself in order to lead others effectively. And that is also being able to know how to check in with yourself 
And I, my role in this course is really to talk about the emotions that come into play when in leadership roles. So whether that be you're an entrepreneur and you're in, you're doing your own, um, your own business where you have to be accountable to yourself, to others, that's going to require self leadership. If you're an emerging leader in a team where you are, you are engaged with team members and you're relating with others, that's going to require you to have strong self leadership skills in order to communicate to your team effectively, build relationships effectively, and also be able to instill this vision to help the team get going together and working together as a team. So um, <clears throat> yeah, that in a nutshell would be kind of the intro to self leadership. Uh, the course is myself uh, discussing the emotional regulation parts where uh, Mike Reynolds, my dad, will be going through more of the understanding how you are resourced as a leader and being able to really bring your personal strengths into your awareness and what that does for you um, as you. I'm, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, I've never been, but for the first time, I, I'm a little hurt because where's Mike? I don't understand why he's not here. So his leadership was to send you on the show. Is that what you're saying? I'm, no, no, let's let's call it out right We're now. I don't a, understand. I don't understand. It. I don't understand his leadership. Oh wait, it's delegation. I get it. It's delegation. I get it. It's, de it's delegation. He sent out his delegation he's, he's by means of delegation. <laughs> He's equipped me to be here, so we're good. <laughs> there, there you go. That's a great way. Hey, you know what? As I tell my daughters, you better you better say some nice things about your dad because, you know, you're never telling who you're going to marry. <laughs> you be careful. You're going to marry somebody just like me. <laughs> talk bad about me, go talk bad about him. So what I was going to say, I just, man, it must be Friday. Anyhow, so, so that, was, that was wonderfully and said in such a lovely way. And uh, I, I want to tell you, you had no idea how this conversation was going to go, but you trust me mm -hmm. to come on the show mm -hmm. because you've done this. Is not your first rodeo with me. No, nope. and 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 you agreed to a Friday, and I don't know why. <laughs> you should have picked a different day. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, leadership does play a huge role in the way we interact with others mm -hmm. because we are either we're either leading intellectually. Uh, with our problem solving or a number of ways we're leading emotionally, as you're talking about emotional regulation, or maybe we, we have some serious <laughs> irregulation going on and nobody wants to work with us. Uh, so, uh, but there are a number of ways we can lead. We can, we can end up leading with our body and our body parts and putting them out there instead of who we are intellectually. There's a number of ways we can lead. Mm -hmm. But what you're discussing is the program you're highlighting that uh, you and your dad uh, – Again, I repeat the 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 empire that you have. No, just kidding. the. I'll accept uh, it. <laughs> she goes. I'll go with that. Good answer. Right. Keep it in the family. Mm -hmm. But essentially, you're talking about leaning into as uh, Sherry writes here, leaning into listen with intent. Mm -hmm. uh, Tracy says, and the world is in desperate need of leaders. Mm -hmm. Um. I was going to take a few moments to explain why you why you are on the show in this subject, but uh, at least uh, a few people here are recognizing the importance of leadership mm. because we could talk about or label what other bad behavior we may see or people may do toward us, but we have opportunities to step into leadership in the workplace, mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, as an entrepreneur uh, in other ways so that we can rise above whatever we may go through. Uh, if we didn't get that sales call, if we didn't get the job that we wanted, mm -hmm. uh, or if we were banking on a certain job as an entrepreneur, so many people find themselves uh, after a relationship, during a relationship, trying to start a business and get going. Mm -hmm. I wanted you on to highlight some of the importance of being a leader, yes. even if we're being a leader of one ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you're going to be talking about when it comes to emotions and in leadership? Yes, absolutely. And I, I love the way you said being a leader of one, it can also be rec recognizing how you navigate change throughout leadership. So, you know, being able to understand what can come up for you throughout change, 
our emotions are are very can be a, a very uh, participant, high participant in the yeah. in this midst of change because you know it can be a shock to our system at times. So really being mindful of how we are checking in with ourselves emotionally will impact how we lead. So from the emotional regulation standpoint, I'll be really ta talking about how to li first label your emotions and understand when you have been emotionally activated. Because when we're emotionally activated and if we're leading from that place of emotional activation, sometimes we can be leading from hurt, we can be leading from pride, and that can result in a lot of disengagement of the team who you're interacting with and disconnection. So when we tune into our emotions throughout our roles as leaders, we can ensure that we are communicating from a position of, you know, understanding that we're carrying out the vision that we want to, but we're communicating with more clarity and understanding the role of emotions in in our communication. When, so, it, when it comes to you and I communicating right now, mm -hmm. my emotions can dictate, have an effect on, influence your reaction to me. Mm -hmm. And the words I, I use can really show the emotions that I have to a measured degree. They can be a telltale in a way, what if we're dealing with someone in business and we're, we're leading, we're a leader of one, our own business, and we're talking with another person that we're trying to do business with, mm -hmm. but yet our emotions are activated because that person is showing through their words that their, their motivation and their emotions don't want to cooperate with us. Mm, right. Yes. I think that's great to acknowledge is when we feel there's a lack of cooperation, of course, that's going to bring up emotional activation of, you know, if someone's, if I'm trying to collaborate with someone and it's not working, yes. you know, being able to notice what's happening for you in that moment of, okay, I'm noticing my heart rate is getting quicker, <laughs> tuning into what your physical yeah. sensations are informing you to say, okay, pay attention to what you're feeling right now because it's time to just look at that and say okay how do i best present myself in this moment being yeah. mindful that i'm emotionally activated how do i breathe through this moment give myself a moment to just understand what's taking place what's happening for me what could be happening mm -hmm. for the other person and how do i how do i now engage with in a way that is going to aid that connection as opposed to as opposed to going back and forth in this in this disconnected communication. So um, really taking a if, moment for yourself. If it's disconnected, is there a pretty good chance that if we pursue even more? Okay, we got to say hi to Abby. Abby's throwing hellos out to us. Hi, Abby. Hi, Abby. And again, I say to you, where is Mike? Where is Somebody Mike? needs to get a hold of Mike I'm and tell him to join him. the live. I so is he here in the live? The yeah. live. All right, so... <laughs> Anyhow, um, what I was going to say is if it's a disconnect, then somebody maybe needs to walk away or do we keep pursuing even though our emotions are activated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes, you know, being able to notice that you are emotionally activated and when you have the predecision before of, okay, when I'm emotionally activated, I need time to pause. So if I'm in a conversation and I know this is getting really escalated we're not really seeing each other seeing each other's perspectives because the emotions are so high then that can be an indicator to say okay you know i think we should take a moment just to recollect for a moment here just re let me reestablish my notes let me understand and let's let's circle back to this topic giving yourself space to really get that space between your thoughts and that emotional re reaction so <clears throat> in that moment you can be uh take that time to not react emotionally, but instead reflect and respond in a way that is true to you, that is true to your vision and your mission and your values of what you want to establish. If you are looking uh, to expand on your business and you want to reach out to someone that uh, will work with you, 
this is what your program can do, correct? So in terms of what I would say in terms of how I would describe the program itself, it's really helping leaders to build in their level of confidence as a self leader. So a big portion of this program is really understanding what are your strengths? How do you recognize what these strengths are? And how do you lead in the area of your, of your strengths? And also recognizing what can be some potential blind spots in, in yourself that, that this can be informative for you to say, okay, how do I recruit in this area? How do I de delegate? Knowing that this is not my strength zone, but I'm aware of it, how do mm -hmm. I delegate? Oftentimes, if we're in a leadership role, but we're not aware of our strengths and we're not aware of our, our blind spots, then yeah. that's going to result in a lot of disconnection with our team because we're not going to know first how to kind of who to throw the ball to. And I know um, mm -hmm. John Maxwell talks about, uh, you know, leadership being almost like a quarterback of not taking all the runs, but you know who to throw the ball to. So being able to delegate is recognizing your strengths, knowing the strengths of your team, and really keeping that top of mind awareness when when communicating with others. So this course is going is a, a tool to help you uh, format that of how you're checking it with yourself, what be bringing that to your awareness, and really having developing an implementation plan of how you want to move these gifts forward um, in your leadership role, uh, in life in business, um, in you know in your relationships so that would be what i would say is what you'd be getting out of this course more we're, clarity. We're, we're talking about you as you just mentioned more clarity more people today find themselves starting a sole proprietorship or uh, they may move themselves to uh, uh, an llc or a number of different things uh, they may be working for someone but they really can't tap into what makes them tick, their mm -hmm. strengths, as well as maybe their blind sides, as you call it, to mention it, uh, or their weaknesses. That we may not be able to truly be honest with ourselves or ever have done the digging to find out what makes us tick as right. a leader of one that uh, really can show itself in our relationships, uh, in our families. Maybe there are times that we've been sitting back, but maybe we need to show the leadership aspect or the delegation aspect how to delegate a responsibility, as you said, to know, as it were, who to give assignments to, mm -hmm. which ones we need to take on and which we need to maybe get a contractor to do it or someone else to do it. Yeah. Uh, in order to do that, the program helps a, a person kind of, as it were, peel the onion layers back to kind of understand who they are. Um, so if you are watching this now or will watch it on demand or, or watch the playback, we're talking about people really kind of taking a deep breath going like, okay, I need some assistance in knowing my leadership skills. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are very good at being told what to do, but not everyone is comfortable highlighting, showcasing, or telling someone else what to do. Mm -hmm. And maybe we need to take a course that can help do that. That's why I wanted to, to talk about this is because it's one thing to talk about I'll say it again, what someone else has done to us. And it's another thing to recover and move forward and start to implement the, the classes or courses that can help a person grow. Mm -hmm. And it seems like you and your dad, uh, Mighty Mike, I'm just going to call him Mighty Mike now. <laughs> Mighty Mike, he's going to beat me up. I know he's going to beat me up. Everybody, he's going to beat me up. Um, Mighty, uh, Mighty Mike is, has established something here that people need to be a part of. If you feel you need... To do something for yourself, uh, this will be a course to do it. Uh, can I throw a few things at you, and then you tell me how they can relate to the? Look at you looking. Feels like I do this every time with Paxton. I'm telling what he's going to say to me, and it's a Friday where he's never serious. Okay, all right. So here we go. You sure you want to do this? You ready? Let's hear it. <laughs> Little does she know. Okay, so when it comes to leadership. Not just in a relationship, but in the workforce, or if we are, as it were, a leader of just ourselves, a leader of one, mm -hmm. I'm going to get to what you highlighted, naming our emotions, mm. regulating and reflecting 
on our emotions. Now, according to what's posted here, this is by Dr. Sue Johnson, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Sue Johnson. You sure you're ready for this, right? <laughs> yes. Because now you got to now you got to try to remember. Go like, what did I put down there? <laughs> the first thing you wrote was Paxton is awesome. I think Paxton is the number one. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, just kidding. Oh wait, so my daughters wrote that. Anyhow, so here we go. So, um, what we name, we tame. When we give meaning to something, we can tolerate it and even change its impact. How is something like that beneficial when we're talking about leadership in business? Mm -hmm. Yes. So a big portion of, of leadership is being able to practice self-awareness. And when you are self-aware of what's happening for you in a given moment, of uh, how your emotions might be impacting your role to communicate, your role to make decisions. Um, you can really, once you label that emotion, like that quote shit says, is when you name it, you tame it. So that component of, if I don't name something, it's just going to be kind of present in the background and mm -hmm. I'm not aware of it. But the second I... I name it, I now become aware of, okay, I am emotionally activated. Maybe I felt betrayed in a moment. Maybe I felt, you know, this person didn't give me credit for this and I feel betrayed. And now I'm, I'm, I'm noticing anger come up in my emotional reaction. But yeah. when the second I say, I feel betrayed right now, you know, it gives you an opportunity to just validate yourself and say, yeah, that, that is betrayal right there. And also giving yourself permission to just pause with that and say, okay, this is, I'm informed of this is the emotion that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. How, what do I need in this moment? Do I need to take a step away from this situation just to collect my thoughts? And if I do that, how did that going to help me gain cl greater clarity of how to approach this conversation with this colleague, for example? So really being able to name our emotions helps us first reduce the impact of it because if we went, reacted to that feeling of betrayal and I, you know, maybe I started to become very emotionally activated, now I'm disengaged or maybe I'm saying things that are harmful for the team, then that's going to result in disengagement and it's not going not gonna to be positive for the solutions of moving the team forward. Um, but when we create a culture that acknowledges the importance of emotions, it gives us space to just be transparent about what's taking place. And it, that's where you're leading with that vulnerability and courage as well. So it's not sweeping the emotion under the rug. It's not ignoring the emotion. Mm -hmm. It's literally recognizing what it is one is feeling and be able to speak to it preferably in the moment if not to be able to at least recognize what it is and step aside or uh, uh, take someone in the office or if it's at home uh, mm -hmm. be able to to speak at it at the appropriate time so that it doesn't and i love what you said it doesn't damage the team mm -hmm. it doesn't become the center of attention but it becomes something that is addressed yes so that the team is the center of attention or we, of course we could support uh, take the, the the word team out and put the word family in, that mm -hmm. the family becomes a center of attention. But right now we're talking about in regards to business and the program that you're highlighting that can help leaders, because that's what we're discussing right now, leadership. Leadership, yes, in a relationship is fundamental, but a work relationship is just that too. It, it, it's also a relationship. Exactly. So when it comes to a work relationship, you're saying that it's very important for us, as was highlighted in a posting that you had, to as it were, give meaning to something, we we actually are able to to tame it. Yes. If we can't tame that, if we don't, can't name that emotion we're feeling in the moment when we have, using your example, been betrayed, mm -hmm. and be able to regulate that anger, doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Nobody's going to be perfect. We're going to feel something. Yes. We're going to get a little wrathful. We're going to get a little upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. It's going to happen, but being able to label it changes the dynamics of it based upon what you're saying. Exactly. And the aspect of recognizing what meaning we're attaching to that emotion. So if I've okay. noticed myself feeling betrayed, what is the meaning? Am I saying, this means that I'm never going to succeed? Is that the meaning that we attach in that moment? 
Or are mm -hmm. we going to pause and say, okay, this means I'm betrayed right now. I'm betrayed by one person. Doesn't mean I'm not going to succeed. Right. Does not mean that I'm not going to be able to um, a, have a kind of understanding of the impact of this and be able to revisit this conversation to get a solution. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really like to understand what are, especially when emotions are present, what meaning are we associating to that? Because oftentimes in the moment when we're just reactive, we might generalize one situation. So big cues and indicators are, are we saying, you know, this always happens, or I'm never doing that. Those types of words will engage, will enhance that emotional experience and also mm -hmm. catastrophize the experience. But when we give ourselves that space to just breathe and pause and label it, we, are, we can kind of take it one step at a time and unpack it little by little and that's how we get to those solutions of how we want to behave and present ourselves in a way that's aligned with with our goals. So in, instead of driving a huge truck, a Brinks truck, right through everything every time we feel emotions, or sweeping it under the rug and, and putting on a smiling face and we're really hurting inside, neither one is going to be the balanced approach. Um yes. I just noticed this popped up here. I'm sorry, Trace Face, tra excuse me, Trace Face It uh, has just left the room. So I'm going to, can you just wave with me, please? Just, we just wave. Thank you. We will see you soon. She's going to be on the show soon. Um, the, uh, the DJ of the night, uh, she DJs on Thursdays. Just throw that out there to all of you guys so you guys know. She said, great stuff. Glad I caught a live. Keep up the great work and thank you for putting this program together with your father. Brilliant, thank is you. what she said. Thank uh, you. So she, much. she was, she said father, and then she put exclamation mark. And then she wrote the word brilliant. So I'm quite sure she was talking about you, uh, and and not your dad. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I'm just messing. I'm just. I'm, I'm going to mess with Mike. She also said need to jump jump off to do a session, but glad I caught the last thirty minutes. So. Um, there you go. She, she's happy. See, look at you. Awesome. Making the, so glad. Making the world a better place. Um, any more thoughts that you can pass on uh, when it comes to our emotions and regulating them? Yeah. So I really being able to be aware of what are the typical kind of raw spots that trigger your emotions or what are the pain points that you feel like might get you more emotionally escalated. So, you know, if, I'm aware that, okay, if I'm being approached in maybe a passive aggressive tone, that can be a trigger for my emotions. So really being able to say, okay, when that's happening, I need to be aware of that, that's a trigger for me in order to help support myself that I need to pause and regulate my emotions. So when we're mindful of our triggers beforehand, we can, it can help us slow down the process when the emotions are coming up. So as soon as we see that trigger cue, we go, okay, this is a raw spot. I'm gonna have to, to practice what is helpful for me in this moment. So you're, you're extra mindful of those vulnerabilities. And that is, you know, that aspect of self leadership is you are aware of yourself in order to lead others effectively and be a part of that team uh, whether that be in work, whether that be in relationships, you need to be able to know yourself in order to relate in, a, in an effective way with others. Okay, so this part of knowing ourselves doesn't mean we, just because something sparks us uh, or, or triggers us is a common expression. So if something sets us off, it doesn't mean, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be laughing. It doesn't mean that we have the right to just start punching people. No. Or throwing or throwing things, uh, especially uh, well, either way in in the work setting or in the family setting, is just not the best option. No, I would. Why? Why? <laughs> well, <laughs> Wait, let's let's let's, let's call up Mike. Let's call up Mike. Uh, let me let me give him the show's phone number and he can call into the show. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, as much as, when, and that's the beauty of acknowledging our emotions, as much as we feel that way, like, it's in that moment, when we label it, we go, okay, of course, I'm feeling this way right now. Of course, I'm feeling like 
I want to like be, you know, out Terrible there. Stuff. Terrible, Terrible stuff. stuff. I feel just it terror. right now, but I'm not because I'm aware. I'm aware of that, and I'm just gonna pause and just give myself permission to validate that because it makes sense. Especially, you know, as you as we that example that we use when we feel betrayed. Of course, we're gonna feel angry. So just giving room to say, of course, I'm feeling this way right now. Of course, this makes sense. So you, when you validate yourself, it gives permission to not react in that moment because you're, you're giving yourself permission that it's okay to feel how you feel and noticing, okay, how do I respond in a way that is aligned with my integrity? So really being able to, to slow that down um, is so powerful. What if a person finds themselves in a situation like this and over and over that they're mm-hmm. just ticked off. They're right. they're constantly their buttons are constantly being pushed. Yes. Well, I um mm-hmm. what what do they need to do ahead of time? I'm asking that as a leading question for myself because yes. I'm looking at something that you posted and you have four intentions for the day. Mm. That's staying hydrated, speaking kind to myself, taking breaks when needed, and celebrate the small victory. Mm-hmm. Staying hydrated, speaking kind to myself, taking breaks when needed, and celebrate the small victory. How mm-hmm. can those four points that you posted be beneficial when it comes to being a leader, mm-hmm. whether it's in the home, in a relationship, or at work relationship? Yes. Uh, so in terms of those four points of staying hydrated, uh, be, speaking kind to yourself, and being able to celebrate those small victories, you're really being able to check in with yourself throughout the day when you when you make set that intention for yourself. So, you know, when, when discussing triggers, or if I know I'm going into a day that's going to require a lot of attention and intentionality from me, uh, emotionally, from a mental capacity, uh, really being able to say, okay, how do I take care of myself throughout this day to ensure that I'm supporting myself so I can show up effectively for others and for myself? So really being able to set your intention, and that's really what this this course is for self-leadership, is re- knowing ways of how, as you as an individual, how do you set your intention to set yourself up for success? So really creating a implementation plan that is specific to you uh, will be is is effective in terms of how you are showing up in these different environments so when a person prioritizes their wellness emotionally and Mm -hmm. and being balanced uh, with themselves then it's it's much easier than to be a leader Mm -hmm. because you're not on the edge Mm -hmm. you're not always at the edge of every moment to be sparked or triggered end up flying off at the handle on people and then wonder why the team or the family doesn't want to be around that person. Right. Yes, exactly. With leadership, you know, there's a lot of things that can involve that. So making decisions, um, you know, ensuring that the vision is communicated effectively, understanding the gifts of your teams, of your team and understanding the gifts in yourself and how to delegate that. So there's a lot of decision making that's taking place. So ensuring that you are aware of yourself of, okay, what, what strengths do I bring to the table? How do I, how can I best show up in this space here? But also, what do I need to be mindful of for myself emotionally? Because every day we wake up, you know, there could be changes, we could be going through things personally, we could be, you know, just maybe we have lack of sleep that day. Being aware yeah. of what those uh, things are can really help help us be mindful of how we show up in with integrity and being able to essentially recruit in those areas. So if I had a if I had a really um, a really uh, kind of poor sleep the night before, yeah. I'm gonna be mindful. Okay, you know, throughout this day, I know I might be more triggered. I might be more like kind of when I'm faced with certain decisions. Maybe I need to take a moment for myself to really mm-hmm. be intentional about recollecting my thoughts because I know I'm operating from a lack, lack of sleep right now. So it's all about bringing those things into awareness and how to use that information at, to carry, carry the task forward that day. 
I like uh, another thing that uh, you highlighted. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, you have a posting that says self-check, uh, that we can self-check. Mm. Are you making decisions from peace or are you making decisions from pride? Mm. Again, are you making decisions from peace or are you making decisions from pride? Yeah. Why is that important when it comes to leadership? I'm glad you brought that that post up because in terms of, you know, when we are it's it's, it's all good. It's all good. I got your back. Cuz your dad's going to your dad's going to make a donation purchase to our, our merch store <laughs> to keep our show going. So let's go ahead. What are you going to say? My Mighty Mike's going to get he got us covered. He's going to he's going to buy a coffee <laughs> mug or a t-shirt or something. I'm some leggings. I'm gonna he he to can give it to somebody in his in his his group. Just, <laughs> yeah. go, go to the link. He, he can go ahead. Go to the website. <laughs> Snarkviewstv.com. Just gotta stick that go. in there real quick. <laughs> go ahead. Donate. Keep the show going. Go ahead. You were gonna say. <laughs> yes. So in terms of leading from pride, or are you leading making decisions from peace? So that the distinction is, you know, being able when you're making decisions from pride, you haven't taken that moment to reflect on what's happening. It's very instant. And your a lot of the emotions that might be present is can be frustration, it could be hurt, maybe jealousy. So really being able to pause and say, what emotions are present here? And am I about to make a decision with those emotions taking driver's seat? And so when we when we make a decision from peace, we acknowledge that we have been emotionally activated. And we take a moment to say, okay, let's Let's take a step back. Let me check in with myself and recognize, you know, can, do I need to seek some wise counsel right now? Who are my people that I can trust, that I can rely on, that when I'm going navigating these challenges, am I tapping into that community of support and being able to say, okay, I've, t I've acknowledged my emotions. I've mm -hmm. reality checked them with people that I trust. So that right. can sound like, hey, you know, this came up. What would you do in this situation? Do you, can you check me on this? Is, am I yeah. I'm thinking of making this decision? How does that sound to you? And really being able to reality check that with that support and then giving yourself permission to say, okay, now I, I can check in with my emotions. How, how high, how intense is the, is the hurt right now? How intense are these other, uh, how intense is the frustration? And if it's at a level 10 frustration, maybe that can be informing of, okay, let's take a bit, I don't want to revisit this conversation with someone just yet. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So being able to be mindful of, you know, the intensity of that emotion and being able to say, okay, I'm going to now use this as, as information to how to make a decision. So um, really, really being able to understand the difference of decision-making where in terms of checking in your emotions. You've given us uh, information that can be a foundation for making balanced decisions as a leader, whether it be at work or at home. Those may be the locations or wherever we may be, but it's all still relationship. Mm -hmm. You're essentially highlighting that your program uh, that you and your dad uh, are have embarked upon is allowing individuals to learn how to become solid leaders in a world that seems leaderless. Mm. Uh, so that's uh, very beneficial. I, I have to read some more to you, and then I'm not going to hold you all day because I know you have very important things that you need to do other than talking to me. But I want to I want to end the show with this posting that you have. I hope everything's okay. I don't know if I'm getting feedback in my ear. Hopefully you can hear me comfortably. I can uh, hear you. You, yeah. you okay? okay? Okay. So I'm going to read this, and then you just jump in. Um, uh, I'm going to invite you in after I read a couple of things and tell us we're going to end the show with these thoughts in mind. I just noticed right now, whether she's still here or not, uh, Katie is here uh, from Soul Cousins. Uh, so, Katie, if you're here, I'm just uh, going to highlight to you or if you watch this back later. I really think uh, Soul Cousins, it's the Instagram page. Uh, I would love it if you were able to, to do a collaboration with them, if that works out for all of you, because um they have a nice audience that could use this kind of information in that I'm program sure. you're talking about. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting, putting people together like I always do on my show uh, with, yeah. without, their, without their permission. Anyhow, so <laughs> it says, it says uh, from, your, from, your, 
from a, a posting that you had. It said, let peace guide you. Mm -hmm. Emotions are part of life and being human. Sometimes they, we, can feel some big emotions and they feel so fast. Mm -hmm. I encourage you to slow down, is what you write. Mm -hmm. Breathe and give yourself permission to pause and label your core emotion. Mm -hmm. This is what you wrote. Although this can feel challenging at times, the payoff of this can be positively impactful. How can they be impactful? How can this step, these steps you're saying, how can they be impactful in our life when we slow down, mm -hmm. breathe, and then give ourselves permission to pause and label the core emotions that we're feeling in a given moment. Why is that important for us to recognize to do that as a human yes. in a fast in a fast paced world? Mm -hmm. So the impact of slowing down to breathe to acknowledge acknowledge your emotions. What would be first connection is you're giving yourself permission to aid connection. Uh, when you do that. So what I mean by that is you giving yourself permission to check in with yourself, you can show up in ways that are aiding that connection as opposed to, you know, reacting to an emotion that can result in not really communicating with clear intention of what you're actually feeling. It's not aligned. Um, so that would be a, a big impact as well as that integrity of of how we're communicating integrity of what we're actually communicating and you know a lot of times in, in working with with couples in particular you see that all the time with you know sometimes we will see the behavior is blaming of oh why don't you ever do this but really the core emotion is i feel hurt and i feel alone because i feel like i'm carrying this all by myself so imagine if we were to tune into that emotion of I feel hurt and alone. And imagine if we were to communicate that to our partner and say, hey, I feel really hurt and alone when you do this. Do you mind doing it this way? Or I'd appreciate it if, if you did this. As opposed to blaming. How would that person receive it? And I think, you know, by you even saying, you know, what if this is something that's repetitive and it's a pattern? Well, I think that's fair. Because if something is a pattern, we repeatedly see something where we've expressed our needs, we've expressed our emotions in a way that's clear, and we, we see the pattern continuously play out, then that right there is information for us of, okay, I've expressed myself clearly, mm -hmm. and this person is not willing to meet those needs or willing mm -hmm. to make changes. So what is that informing me of? And that can also bring greater clarity of how you make decisions. Is this a relationship I want to partner with? Is this a, a business relationship yep. I want to partner with? Yep. So really yep. giving yourself permission to have more clarity as you as you go through life and make decisions and how to even navigate changes. If a person is in uh, business and uh, the constant for them is, uh, is having uh, a relationship with people who are on time or that uh, keep their word, Mm -hmm. uh, or don't make excuses. People can have a number of things that make us who we are, mm -hmm. but yet we embark on relationships in business in which people miss appointments, ignore appointments, don't you know, don't respond, or uh, mm -hmm. a number of things. That's going to affect your leadership with the rest of the team because mm -hmm. if you haven't labeled your emotion in dealing with that particular person, you're going to end up taking it out or the next person that walks through your office door right. or yeah or yourself if you're if you're a, a leader of one and you're you know you're you're a sole proprietorship uh, mm -hmm. you it'll start to affect your creativity because yes. you're allowing someone's negative pattern or their lifestyle that doesn't fit with yours affect you making money uh, mm -hmm. or affect as it were in the family relationship same thing if you have someone that's uncooperative uh, unthankful and they're not, and they're unappreciative. Mm -hmm. It's going to affect your leadership style. Yeah. I say that as I say that as a dad, but <laughs> no, let alone business. Uh, go ahead. You're going to say something. Uh, I'm so glad you brought that up because that make that is so important to address. Is 
if I'm not checking in with my emotions and I'm just kind of reacting to the emotion and I'm not seeing the results where the person can hear me or I really understand what yes. I what I need, mm-hmm. that's going to result in discouragement. And when we're discouraged and we're leading from discouragement, it's really hard to be able to motivate our team when our we're already feeling so discouraged in the vision yes. because we haven't checked in with ourselves. We haven't given ourselves permission to to acknowledge where feelings are coming up and how yes. to in, be informed by these feelings. If we if we don't acknowledge those emotions, then that's going to create a problem. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing. We could talk about the negative aspect of what another person can do and how they, they fail us or disappoint us. But when we start to regulate and recognize, become, as you highlighted earlier, self-aware of the emotions we're feeling mm-hmm. and address those first, more than the labeling and pointing at someone else who let us down, mm-hmm. we're able to navigate away from that person. For example, I'm going to take something you wrote. I get to turn your words against you. <laughs> um, so this is what you said before we end the show. As I said, everybody, we're going to be ending the show right here because this is the first of three shows today. Uh, I don't call you Tasha because that sounds like something only family can call you. And I'm not family. Because Mike's not, because Mike's not here. But what I was gonna say is, I just sorry, I just have to keep doing it. It just makes me laugh inside. I was just trying to hold it in while I say it. I'm excited no, you know, for him to to watch the the re- <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, he's probably gonna watch it while he's barbecuing and just you know not even watch it, just have it on. But what I was gonna say, while he's putting on his prime rib and I'm I'm here he having cup of cup of noodles. But what I was gonna say. <laughs> What is wrong with me? I don't know. Okay, I don't know what's wrong with me. All right, here we go. Here we go. Emotions are not facts. That's what you uh, wrote here. How do you get yourself grounded to ensure you can respond from a place of peace versus pride? How can you get yourself grounded Mm -hmm. is what you ask. Here are some tips to help you respond from peace. You list one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five different things that an individual can do to be a leader from the place of peace instead of the place of pride. Mm-hmm. Very, very fundamentally important when we are, and again, it's easy for me to say this, I'm talking from a place as a dad, but just uh, from the corporate world standpoint, uh, uh, being a part of that aspect, the people who we all enjoyed working with or the teams that enjoyed working with us were teams that knew we were trying to get along, mm. but we weren't begging someone to like us. Mm-hmm. Those are two different things. What you and your dad are highlighting is if we know our own aspects that we give out or bring to the table, mm-hmm. our strengths, then we're able to help. But you're saying the role that you play in this leadership academy, am I saying it right? Yes, self leadership okay. academy. Yes. Okay. The, the role you're playing is talking about emotions in this aspect mm-hmm. as a leader, our emotions. And you're saying here, emotions are not facts, but we can stay grounded in a place of peace by implementing five fundamental things. If you want to know what those five things are, uh, you will have to uh, get a hold of, uh, what's the name of the company again? All, what was it again? All Strive. Okay, All I just, Strive. my way to get you to say it. So, I, <laughs> so the name of the company and the Instagram page is what? All Strive. And, and they can, go ahead, please. Yeah. Oh, wait, I wasn't going to say that. Other one. I know you're going to say it. I, I cut you off. I, didn't, I was going to, I was going to tell them to go to that page to reach out to you. Is that okay? That sounds great. Yeah. Because some little bird told me not to mix the two. So just, <laughs> everybody's going like, what are they talking about? Like, like you're talking lingo coach stuff. I don't know. Martha, what are they talking about? But uh, they can reach out to you to find out the five steps, or you're more than welcome once I upload this show to the Instagram platform to put in those five steps in the comment section if you like uh, to do that. Uh, Sabine is giving you some heart. Sabine is doing that because I'm going to torture her next. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get you next, Sabine. Uh, so, okay, so this show, there are five elements to lead from a place of peace, whether it's in your home or whether it's at work. It could be picking up your groceries. 
but you're you're finding yourself to be a person who's leading with peace in mind, not confrontation or criticism, mm -hmm. uh, or, or as you put it, pride. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that we need to be able to do what you said, mm -hmm. be self-aware and understand the emotions we're having in a given moment and not sweep them under the rug, but address them as uh, time allows us in circumstance to do so. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of wrapping up your your conversation with me today with this. The payoff, this is your writing, the payoff of this can be positively impactful. Now, you wrote that, and you used two words, positively impactful. Mm -hmm. From the day that I met you, I see you that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite sure it has nothing to do with your dad. But what I was going to say is... <laughs> Oh, I'm going to be so in trouble. He's going to beat me up. You got to find me first. You got to find me first. I just want you guys to meet now. <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh -uh. He's going to punch in my life. I'm going to tell him, emotionally regulate. Emotionally regulate. Better regulate. Better He's regulate. Emotionally regulated, so you'll be good. You won't, you won't, you won't catch any punches. Give me a hug. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> All right, I'd see you. i go like, what's up? Yeah. Give me a hug. <laughs> you go like I'm not gonna let you touch me, you creepy man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, positively impactful is something that I've recognized. <laughs> Would your mom say it has everything? <laughs> oh snap, snap, snap! Oh, okay. I'm thinking about. I'm gonna when the show's done because I can I can save all the comments of every show. I'm gonna yeah. screenshot that and I'm gonna post it. I'm it. gonna find a way to post that. <laughs> just that, and maybe a picture of her, <laughs> yeah. with with the, with, the, with the little crown that I can just put on her head and go that. like, wait, and then I'm gonna put underneath, where is Mike? <laughs> 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 oh, good lord! I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know it's free. It's free TV for you people, so don't be sitting there complaining. It's not. It's not Disney. It's not, I'm not Steven Spielberg. <laughs> this is free TV, free encouraging TV. Okay, yeah. so. When it comes to a powerful impact, this is something that stems from the way you desire to be despite life challenges. Mm -hmm. And this program that uh, you're putting on in your family empire uh, mm -hmm. is something that uh, is going to be beneficial to individuals that are able to know about it. So as, as much as possible, I look forward to highlighting it uh, on my page, uh, all three of my pages that we have uh, for the communities that we serve. Uh, this is something very encouraging, and thank you for doing this this morning, uh, talking about relationships at work and how to be a leader. Um, any last thoughts, uh, any more powerfully positive, impactful things that you can tell us uh, before you go outside of the fact that we, we planned this so well and yeah. we're so prepared? <laughs> Well, my uh, departing thoughts um, in regards yep. to this would just be to encourage yourself that, you know, self, self awareness is a huge part of, of leadership and just being able, sometimes people think that they need to have all of these strengths in order to be a good leader. Yep. And self awareness is so much more impactful in the sense of knowing what your strengths are and knowing how to delegate appropriately um, yeah. is really is really a, a key of, of knowing how to lead yourself. Um, yeah. But also knowing, knowing what your emotions are and being able to just understand your relationship with emotions, yeah. normalizing that it's okay. It's okay to feel these emotions. Yeah. It's how we respond yeah. to our emotions that matters. Yeah. Um, so and how that shows up in relationship, how that shows up at work, so the first step is just investing in yourself for that self-awareness and getting that clarity and confidence. So I just want to encourage you to take those steps to do that. Very, very important. Very. And don't let anybody else make you feel bad about your emotion. Mm -hmm. So my daughter said, don't, don't be letting somebody else because they can't respond properly to your emotions in that moment. No one's going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But to be self-aware, what you're saying right now is so precious uh, for people to understand. Uh, to be recognizing their emotions. You have taken time out of uh, your busy schedule to accept all of these hearts that are streaming across the screen for you. Uh, you. People loving you. I just love my audience. They're so kind to everybody and they love everybody. Abby here, uh, Abby, that is the actual the name of her Instagram page, Abby here, 
says, thank you for this live. It was good. She gave you a purple heart and some, everybody says either high five or praying hands. I call them uh, happy hands. Uh, she gave you some happy hands and a heart. Uh, I, I want to tell you, this has been a lot of fun, like usual, with you. Uh, so uh, I wanted to make sure to get you back on uh, this show before we end our second season, which will be happening in a few more weeks. We're going to be done and taking a, a little break from doing live shows uh, here on Instagram uh, as we get ready for our third season next year. But I want you to know it is always a pleasure to talk to you. You have really good upbringing uh, for, for, for being a, a, someone who doesn't have any siblings and no family, and it's just you yourself. And you did this all by yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to get it. No, props, props to your family. And uh, I better go because hopefully she won't turn on me now because I said that. Uh, no doubt all of uh, who you have become is because of your mom uh, with uh, micro uh, contributions from your dad. Uh, where, where's Mike? Hey, you guys need to, he needs to do a shirt. Hashtag where's Mike? That's what he I, should do. I need to keep sending him this. Uh, a, it should be a leadership, a leadership shirt. He should, yeah. he should, every time he goes to speak, he should have that shirt on and do like a Superman. You know, have the tie on and everything else and then start a, start a discussion and then pull the shirt over and go like, where's Mike? Some leaders are like, you have to ask, where's Mike? Or Mighty like, Mike. I like that. Mike. Too. Right, hey, that's, that's pretty good. That's that. Well, that would be like that would be like leading from pride, Mighty yeah. Mike. He, he could have these two alter ego. Where's Mike and Mighty Mike? Kind of yeah. like, all right, everybody. This has been um, uh, to you maybe something that's been weird, but I want you to know you've landed at the right place if that's the case because this, this is Narc Abuse TV, and uh, I just I simply adore you as a human being and what you do and the postings you make and. Uh, they're always encouraging. Uh, you do your best to give information that people can apply right away. And so if, if any of you need to have a, ho a, uh, a guest on your show or you host a show, a podcast, please get a hold of Natasha. Uh, get a hold of, I was going to call you Lady T for Tasha, but get a hold of uh, <laughs> Natasha to have her on your show uh, if you want someone encouraging and positive and uh, uh, as a psychotherapist, if I remember, you're a psychotherapist, correct? Yes, yeah. correct. Uh, as, a, as a psychotherapist, uh, she is more than happy to make uh, your show a better show uh, by her encouragement and will encourage uh, your viewers uh, and your subscribers. Uh, so if anybody has a show, please reach out to her. Uh, she's great. But especially this Leadership Academy, um, please uh, reach out if you think you need something where you can, well, become more self-aware about your capabilities or areas you need to improve in. Mm -hmm. uh, you owe it to yourself to have someone work with you so that you can be the type of leader, even if you don't have a huge team, if you're just the leader of one. Mm -hmm. All right. Tell Mike I did my job today. Uh, <laughs> uh, I expect his donation purchase uh, from my merch store. <laughs> no, that's, not so that's, not, that's not true. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean that at all. He needs to make two purchases. <laughs> one for you and one for your for, for, for your mom. Anyhow, so thank you very much. I'm thank out of here. So much. Thanks. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's yeah, really whatever. Here. I know. You don't even talk to me. You're so big now. You got you got you guys are like awesomely cool. All right, I'm just kidding. All right, we're gonna go everybody. Uh you, you gotta get tired of us fawning over each other and being nice to each other. So <laughs> thank we'll you. Regulate so your emotions. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you okay bye everybody let's give them bye. a wave bye everybody we'll bye. see everybody again take care thanks have a good weekend have a great bye weekend. mike bye mike <laughs> bye mike i see you bye, bye. <laughs>